So we are here on a set for Brie Mills for Pewter Boo. Yes. And if you have never seen a movie directed by Brie Mills... You're missing I, out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. She is... She's a weirdo, <laughs> a very creative weirdo. In, in all the best ways. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, everybody loves shooting for her, even though it's super uh, exhausting. It is, but well, it's, it's worth it. Yeah. Most of the time, you know, we, we poor actors have a great life. <laughs> we come on set, mm -hmm. takes us, what, two hours, three hours, maybe a little longer for the girls with the makeup. Mm -hmm. For me, it's sometimes an hour in and out. Uh, and then we go home with a check or go and play a round of golf. But not here. No. When was your call time? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. When mm -hmm. do we expect that we're going to finish tonight? I bet around midnight. Yeah, that's, that's what I <laughs> expect. said 10, so I'm guessing midnight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so long days, um, a lot of dialogue, mm -hmm. very story-driven. Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't have a lot of dialogue today, though. Not today. Today I'm. A I have a lot of dialogue. Today I'm a floating penis. I have no dialogue. Literally a floating <laughs> penis. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we shoot with um, green screen technology today. Mm -hmm. So you don't see the rest of me. You don't have to see my face or anything disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell me about your role. Um. <clears throat> My role in this is a uh, wife uh, to Tommy Pistol, okay. who desperately wants to conceive a child, but have been unable to, despite multiple fertility treatments. So uh, drastic times call for drastic measures. So I go and see Dr. Angelus, played by Angela White, um, who is a... Uh, an, evil scientist of sorts who guarantees me she can get me pregnant no matter what it takes <laughs> okay and another thing a lot of porn is shot simple which is not bad because I mean that's, sometimes you just want to go get off and be done yeah it's, it's, it's great the kino flow lights and a couch and a small camera mm -hmm. and that can make great porn but not here not today uh, they come with a lot of equipment, mm -hmm. high-end equipment. Mm -hmm. It's like being on a movie set. It is. It is a movie set. It is a movie set. Yeah, uh, especially effects, green screen. Mm -hmm. The whole shebang. It's the whole shebang. <laughs> Emphasis on the bang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, it's still porn. So, yeah. but uh, it's very artistic porn. Yes. Uh, what do you think? Can porn be art or is porn generally of course, art of or no art? Of course, porn can be art. I mean, people think that sex is art, so why not sex on camera? Yeah. Why can't sex on camera be art? It is. Yeah. Especially when you do it the way we're doing it today. Yeah. It's, it's a movie, there's a storyline, there's emotions, there's, you know. I personally don't like when people call, call themselves artists. Um, Why? I think let other people make this decision. Like a, a friend So of, do you uh, not think porn is art? No. I, I leave that open. It's in the, in the eye of the beholder. But uh -huh. like I have a, a friend of mine. He is one of the best violinists in the world. We play mm -hmm. golf every Sunday. Uh, he has uh, over 200 credits for movies where he played the violin. Uh, he plays in big orchestra. Or, but if you ask him what, he, uh, what are you doing, he never says, I'm an artist. He says, I'm a violinist. Mm -hmm. so, or, I, or we can say, I'm a painter. And then other can say, oh, this painting is art. Mm -hmm. Or this music, or maybe this porn is art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess it is in the eye of the beholder, but uh, my eyes say it's art, so... No, 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 don't get me wrong. <laughs> no, 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 I, I know, but I'm saying I see it as art. Yeah. But I, I get what you're saying. And I'm just Would saying, you introduce yourself as an artist? Mm, no. Because, like you said, it's in the eye of the beholder, and I see it that way, but other people might not. And, you know, I guess I could just leave it up to them, and yeah. they can think whatever they want. Doesn't mean I'm going to care, yeah. but they can think it's art or not. Yeah. 
You know, I play golf. I mentioned that a lot. And when you play, uh, and especially in combination with porn, sometimes I go spontaneously. I don't mm -hmm. have because I don't know. To, to golf? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes we shoot for guns or we finish at 1 p.m. I have time. I go spontaneously to play, so I don't set up time and other people. And then they always team you up with other people, mm -hmm. and you start talking. And usually. Usually people ask, oh, what are you doing here? What, what are you working? Uh, I, I always introduce mis myself a whore. I said, I'm a, I'm, I'm a whore, I'm a male whore. <laughs> See, men, men can do that, but women get a different reaction when they introduce themselves that way. <laughs> If a man goes and says, oh yeah, I'm a whore, they'll be like, what? Or like, that's cool, bro. But if a woman says, yeah, I'm a whore, they just look at you like you're garbage. Oh, I always loved whores. Yeah, not everyone does. <laughs> yeah. the first That's time, why we love you. The first time I went to a whore, I was 15 years old. And uh, I was uh, bullshitting my grandmother. I told her that I got a ticket uh, with, my, with my little scooter. And mm -hmm. I had to pay the ticket. She gave me the money and I went to... <laughs> to pay a whore. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> back in Germany in, in the 70s. They didn't Did she know it. how young you were? Yeah, nobody cared back then. Wow. I mean, um, in the tradition of my family back in Transylvania, where I was born, it was actually normal that uh, when your son is an adoles adolescent, 14, 15, 16, whatever, when he tries mm -hmm. to... So he doesn't molest the maid or whatever. You you you, you give him money to go to the whorehouse. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> that's wild. <laughs> that was normal back in the days. <sighs> so uh, yeah, we're getting away from <laughs> from our art we are producing today. <laughs> so we shot a bunch of times together. Uh -huh. Actually, the last time was just a week ago or so. Yeah. And it was a totally different scene. It was also long. Mm -hmm. We also sh finished around midnight, but we started late. Yeah. Because it had to be dark. Call time was like 5 p.m. for me that day. Yeah, I think mine was... 7? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine was 7. Uh, and then you had the long drive. How, how was that? I drove that? to Vegas after, straight from that shoot. Oh, my God. It was, I was tired. Uh, how, yeah, did you, I, how did you manage as soon to as stay I, awake? I left set. Um, usually on set, I drink an energy drink like yeah. I am today. But that day on set, I did not drink an energy drink because I knew I would have to drive. So I saved it because I don't want to drink like three energy drinks in a day. Yeah. So I didn't drink one on set. I waited until we were done at, at around midnight, left set, went and filled up my tank with gas and got an energy drink. So I saved it for the end of the day so that I could stay awake through my drive. And I made it. I was fine. And then I got on a plane pretty much right. I got into Vegas at like 4 a.m. Wow. Yeah. And then got yeah, on a plane. Yeah, you're a tough girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then got on a plane straight from there, a six-hour flight. So it was a busy 24 hours for me. <laughs> you know, my busiest trip was uh, one time I had a booking in, uh, in Sao Paulo in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And I, it was at the end of my U.S. trip, and I, I had, I didn't want to bring all my cameras and computers and stuff to Sao Paulo, so I was flying from Los Angeles uh, to Frankfurt, changed the place to Budapest, took a taxi, went home, Jeez. changed changed my luggage, uh, and went took another taxi, went to the airport from Budapest to Frankfurt, Frankfurt, Sao Paulo. Jeez. <laughs> But I could sleep in the plane. I can't sleep on planes. I have a hard time. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This this noise, this motono, how you say motonomous or like burrs? Monot yeah, yeah, monotone. Monotone, monotone mm -hmm. noise that makes me sleepy. Mm -hmm. I also sleep on set. I, I was napping before. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I got a nap break. <laughs> yeah, she she is busy all the, 9 p.m. What time do we have now? It's like 6, no, 9, 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. And now we are around 6 p.m., 6, mm -hmm. 7 p.m. And we haven't had sex yet. We're like halfway done. 
I was rubbing myself at, uh, uh, on her a little bit. But Gotta it was, stay excited during long was, days like this. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say, since you started shooting, was your best experience in porn? I mean, not the best movie or so. Mm -hmm. In general, what do you like best in, in this life of a porn hmm. star? Like my best day on set? No, or? whatever you think is like... Some girls say, oh, I could experiment sexual things which I wouldn't be able as a... a yeah. of, or whatever, or your best day on sex, whatever you would so, say. That for sure, obviously. Um, getting to experience new things in a controlled and safe environment with people who are tested and all those great things that porn can offer you that the real world probably cannot. Yeah. Whereas, like, if you tried to do... If someone wanted... If I wanted to do a gangbang... Yeah. Which I do, and which I will eventually. But yeah. if I want, if I tried to organize that uh, off camera, it would be unsafe. Just go to a bar downtown. Hey guys, yeah, uh, but I need ten you, of you. you know, that, that's that's unsafe. Both, you know, physically in the sense that that's a lot of people who have a lot of power over you. You don't know you know diseases and all that. So it's just not safe, and it's not realistic, and it's not smart. Yeah. Whereas in porn. It's completely safe, completely, you know, structured and controlled and, you know, yeah. but not overly. You can still have fun and it's exciting and new while maintaining that safe feeling. But besides that, which I'm, you know, everyone says, uh, I like the freedom that porn gives me because I make my own schedule. I take time off when I want to take time off um, and other jobs can't really offer that as freely as porn does a lot of people talk about the gig economy like lyft and uber driver mm -hmm. that they have this freedom and i think that the big part and but we have much more freedom because you can make in one afternoon enough money to live two weeks or, uh, and and, mm -hmm. and to do other things if you don't want to shoot mm -hmm. again in this time this year uh when i got my tubes tied I unexpectedly had to take a month off of work because when I was, before I got the surgery, they told me like, oh yeah, you'll be, they didn't know what I do for work. Yeah. They said, you'll be feeling well enough to go back to work after a few days. So I'm like, okay, perfect. I don't really have to take that much time off. But what I didn't realize, I did feel great after the surgery, but my incisions were showing. So oh. I can't shoot if I have a cut yeah. in my, in my stomach. So I had to take time off to let the incision fully he heal, even though I, I felt great. No one wants to shoot that, yeah. you know, with a big cut and big, you know, stitches in me. And I had to take a month off of work unexpectedly, and I was totally fine financially yeah. because of porn. Yeah. If, you know, any job I worked before porn, if I unexpectedly had to take a month off of work, it would be devastating. Yeah. So. What have you done before work? Um, so the first job I ever had, I coached gymnastics. Yeah, I, 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 I know you're, you're, you're a great gymnast. <laughs> you were uh, like doing competitive. competitive. Yeah, I did competitive gymnastics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I coached gymnastics and then I worked at a solar company. It's like solar energy. Okay. Um, and then I worked at a boarding school. Are you a teacher? No, I was a counselor. Okay. It was for uh, troubled youth. Okay. Like a boarding school for troubled, troubled youth. Okay. Wow, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I also did a lot of things, but you started young. I started when I was 35 years old, almost 36. So I did a lot of other things before porn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, While still being a whore the whole time, though. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I've Same. Always been. Always been <laughs> since I was young. Uh, uh, what else? So, yeah, that was the best. What is the worst thing in porn that happened to you or what you like least? Uh, I guess it's not so bad now. It was harder at the beginning, but you learn lessons at the beginning and you make mistakes and you don't make those mistakes again. Uh, you don't want to make any enemies in this business. First of all, because it's just, why make enemies when you could just be friends with everyone? Yeah. But the difference between having enemies in porn and having enemies in work outside of porn is you don't have to have sex with them. I mean, <laughs> isn't that why you have like, like lists and stuff or some girls I don't have, have yeah I mean some I, girls have yeah some girls do but I mean can be a director can be a performer yeah it can be anyone saying, like yeah. so even if there's someone in the industry that you don't love or don't get along with or you know I don't I wouldn't say I have like 
enemies, at least I don't with people, maybe other people with me, but I, there are people, fav- favorable and unfavorable people, everyone feels that way about certain people, but like I said, in our industry, it's not as beneficial to have a longer list of unfavorable people because then you have a smaller pool of talent you can work with, yeah. and or if you do work with, work with them, it's it can be weird, I guess, for them or for you. Yeah. I haven't had that experience, but I know that other people do, and that uh, it it does happen. Yeah, I mean, uh, of course. That's that's something in our business. Uh, work relationships in our business is a little They're bit different, different than and it's if higher you, pressure. And if you work as a clerk mm-hmm. in the bank or whatever, you mm-hmm. know, yeah, because it's very. Because imagine imagine that person at work that you hate, and then you have to go have sex with them. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know about you. Maybe it's different for girls or different for you. Sometimes I like to fuck girls I hate. Uh, yeah, same, same. But I, not everyone is like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your time. I know you have a very busy day. You still have some baby powder. Yeah, I have powder. baby powder all over uh, me still. <laughs> and you have to get ready for the next set. Mm-hmm. I thank you for your time. Thank you. And I <laughs> hope, I mean, I'm gonna, we're going to have some physical contact mm-hmm. later. I'm going to give you a blowjob. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm. 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 Thank you. <laughs> okay. Cut. Mm.